We were in Colombia, living in my mom's house. The house was fine, nothing was wrong. But as time went on, around the third month, strange things started happening. I was home alone, as usual, but this time I felt something strange. I went home that day and I had a really bad headache. My dog, who usually never comes into my room, was there this time. He was lying right next to my bed with his tail between his legs, shivering. At first I thought he was enjoying the breeze from my bedroom window, but the window was closed and he looked really scared. For the next few hours I put him to bed and we took a nap together. But when I woke up I saw a long dark shadow that looked like a person. I closed my eyes tightly, thinking it was just a dream. But when I opened my eyes again, he was still there. Right next to the door where I slept. Weeks went by, I didn't sleep well every day, and finally I couldn't even sleep in my room. It was still there. I didn't tell my mom or my sister because I was afraid they would laugh at me. I started having bad dreams about the thing. In the last dream I remember the house was pitch black and I woke up feeling dizzy. The moonlight was still shining. I felt as if the shadows were crying because something was bothering them. That's when I thought the shadow in my room and the shadow that looked like this man were different. They seemed to be against each other. Suddenly the shadow of the man seemed like a very frightening presence, but I couldn't do anything about it. Once I tried to tell him that I didn't want him here, but he just got angry. This made it impossible for me to return to a normal life. When I was home alone again, the door to my house would forcefully close and open. Sometimes glasses would fall out of the cupboards and break on the floor. I thought my fears would never go away. Then one day I was so angry that I shouted out loud and let out all my frustration. When I breathed and became quiet, the shadow disappeared. I don't know if it was my fault or something else, but even a year later the nightmare is still there. I used to love camping with my family, usually three or four times a year. We usually chose traditional campgrounds like Yogi Bear, Jellystone, and Kauai, but this time it was different. We decided to try something new and went to White Mountain National Forest for a more primitive camping experience. But I wasn't too keen because I was sure I wasn't going to enjoy it. I was about 15 years old at the time and I was going through a period of teenage depression. I was a bit emotional and rude. When we got there, my family started camping and my brother and I couldn't resist the urge to explore our surroundings. We didn't want to get lost, so we wandered around, not going too far. Our conversations were like unsupervised chats between kids, discussing random things. Then I started teasing my brother Jeffrey, pretending to be lost and warning him about bears and monsters. I know it sounds bad, but we joke around like that all the time. But I could tell he was really a little scared, so I reassured him and told him it was all in good fun. As we were exploring, I was looking for a cool place by the water, somewhere we could swim and fish. Then I got curious, and we came across the perfect place. It was really beautiful. My little boy brain really enjoyed spending time outside. I knew we had been away from home for a while, and I was taking care of my little brother, so I didn't want to get into trouble. Mom told us to come back before it got dark. We went back to camp, had dinner, and had the usual family gathering, playing board games and having a campfire, until it was time for bed. Jeffrey and I had our own tent, and my parents had their own tent. There was nothing else, just a sleeping bag and a flashlight. I think we had snacks that we snuck into the tent and a DVD player to watch movies. I fell asleep, but I woke up for no reason and felt a bit sleepy. I turned to Jeffrey and realized he was gone. I was startled and got up immediately. I got out of the tent and there he was, heading towards the path we had just walked down. Jeff, what are you doing? I asked in a low voice. Go to bed before your father finds out. I was worried that my loud voice had woken my parents, but I couldn't understand how Jeffrey had gotten out of the tent without me noticing. He kept walking and was soon out of my sight. I followed him with my flashlight, trying not to make a sound. Eventually, I found him sitting quietly by a lake, a little bit off the trail. I grabbed Jeffrey's arm and pulled him back to the campsite, at which point we suddenly noticed a figure, and it turned out to be a man. It was just eerily not looking at us. He looked really crazy. I could make out a few details in the moonlight. 
He had a creepy mustache and long, greasy-looking hair. He was holding what looked like a hammer. He was just standing there, looking at us. His mouth was wide open, and he was breathing heavily, which created an eerie atmosphere. It looked like he hadn't showered in weeks. I mean, come on. I felt it could be dangerous. I started running, but I couldn't keep up with Jeffrey because he was younger. He was only 10 or 11, so he couldn't run fast with his little legs. I grabbed Jeffrey's arm and tried to pull him to run faster. But another problem was that we had to go past this man to get back to the camp. We had to go around him and run in a big circle around him. It was dark, and we were lucky that we were close to the camp, and who knows what would have happened if it was daylight or further away. We finally found my mom and dad, and I think we must have taken a wrong turn because they found us some distance from the camp. What happened next was disturbing. When we got back to the camp, my father's truck was gone. This man tricked us into leaving the camp and took the truck. He also went into the tent and took my father's wallet and cell phone. Luckily, we had a radio to call for help. The police found my father's truck a few days later and arrested the man. If we had been deep in the forest that night, that man would have definitely caught us. He came after us and wanted to hurt us or take us away. When my father got the truck back, he was in very bad shape. 